Our next talk will be Modernizing Distribution of SDR Tools and Libraries with Conan, who I know from a, being a kid, reading about him. And Brennan has come all the way from the US to explain how he's going to make this all better for us. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the backstory of, of that uh, barbarian. Um, so yeah, thank you all. Um, so how many of you actually know either the Conan he was referring to or the Conan that I might be referring to? Okay, we're getting somewhere. Um, so the other name for this uh, this talk is what does CMake have to do with SNR? Um, it's a question that I find that I ask myself many times when I'm actually just trying to uh, use these tools that we work on. Um, we talked about that hack fest. It seems like CMake was also a topic of the hack fest in various ways. Um, I think we should make it less of a topic. So sit down. Gonna play with some software defined radios, very exciting. Gonna build one of these in my backyard, hook it up, see some things, right? Um, you say I can view images of the Earth from space, that's exciting. I uh, just need to put some stuff together. Put some stuff together. We just need to download some applications, right? Well, maybe not. So, uh, so we'll just build it. Also easy, right? You know, clone it, see make, and uh, not quite right. Um, so I don't think this is really where we were trying to go, nor the rabbit hole that people wanted to get to. Um, so maybe there's an easier way to solve this problem. Um, and there is. The easier way. Images of the Earth. It's pretty fast, no CMake required. Um, but maybe we want to still do this ourselves a little bit. So I want to talk a little bit about Conan, which is an open source C, C++ package manager. Um, this isn't replacing CMake. It's not replacing any of your favorite tools. You can use Ninja or whatever it is you want to use. But rather than having the tools tell us what we don't have, what if we let the tools give us those things? And so when we look at what's going on here, what do we want to do when it comes to packaging? We want to create explicit dependency graphs. So it's not run CMake, have it tell us what we don't have, try again, have it still tell us what we don't have, on and on and on. Track what configured features. Some of these libraries are very large in terms of what they can do. We don't always want to configure every single feature inside of GNU Radio just to do one simple stream of, I don't know, FM signals or something like that. Um, we also don't want to always be building every single one of our dependencies over and over and over again just because we changed one line of code somewhere. Or say we're now using a newer version of OpenCV or something like that. I don't know why I need to rebuild OpenCV for my Windows machine. If anybody's tried that, it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't know, having been part of GNU Radio, you see there's always this question about, well, does it build on Mac? You know, what's the status of this piece here? Does it build on Windows? Does it build on Linux? All of these pieces. These are not the problems that we should have to be thinking about so much. We should just be saying, these are the building blocks. They come together. How do we package that up? And also, we end up in the situation, too, where we have people that are using older systems. They do, they're afraid to upgrade it for whatever reason. Uh, they have too many things that just barely work glued together. And so we end up being tied to really old system libraries. Um, we see this with like the QT stuff. We see it in other places as well where we're holding ourselves back in developing our applications based on system libraries that we're hoping people have installed and working in a, in a smart way. So with Conan, what we do is we actually start to be more descriptive about how this whole piece works. So here, uh, packaging up something libAEC um, and, you know, we put some information about what it is, some settings that we want to be able to configure about this package, so the OS, the compiler, the build type, the architecture we're building out, where we're going to go get the data. We're going to use CMake here. So we're going to, it's kind of the same, you know, we're, we need to configure CMake so we can do our build. We're going to package it up and then do a CMake install, and then we're going to collect information about the libraries that got installed as part of this. So CMake interfaces really well with Conan, so we can extract a lot of this information. You can also manually describe everything that's in here. 
Along the way, you can add additional flags, so options. So when you say, I want this library, I want it compiled with these certain feature flags enabled, these become parts of the metadata that describe the package that you're looking for. Then we want to consume it. We have some kind of boilerplate that we pull up here to leverage some of the infrastructure that Conan is giving us. So in CMake, it's now able to get access to where all the find package, uh, gen we generate all the find packages for the pieces that are needed. Uh, it's also going to sandbox a lot of the stuff off to the side, so it needs special information about the linking. So it takes care of all of that up here. And then when we go to actually do this linking, we say, okay, I need this libac in my application. We just say, pull in the Conan package for this piece. It's not going to pull in your system one. It's going to pull in the one that's linked into the, the Conan dependencies that you already have over there. Then we go and we build this. So we do a Conan create this library at this version. It spit out a whole bunch of stuff. I didn't think you wanted to see all of the uh, lines of the build happening. And at the end, we see that we package this binary application that comes with it, the license, the header files, as well as the library here. And we created a revision and a package hash that it's used to be able to identify this is exactly the package for this configuration that we wanted to use. And this is now stored in some mysterious location on your computer that you don't worry about. Off to the side, don't touch it, it's there. If you, we'll know if you touch it, we'll make you build it again. Um, but like I was saying, so we can go change some stuff. So we talked about whether, like we had those architecture specific things, but we also say build type. You know, we want to build this in debug mode now too. Or we want to build it with shared or um, static libraries. These are all options that can be applied on here. The recipes know how to use these options and then build you exactly what you're looking for. And so when we do that, these are the settings that came out of it. So we see that I'm building for Mac OS. This is the, you know, the compiler version I'm using as part of GC, or I guess this is a, a C Lang, Apple C Lang. Um, but you get all these different things. So if I'm building on a Linux machine, I might have a configuration that's using GCC or CLang, not Apple CLang. Get all these different variations. We're able to keep track of all of that and make sure we're referencing exactly what it is that we want. And then we can take this other library, Poco. I don't know if people really with C, C++. Poco is kind of a library that helps do a bunch of common, of common tasks. But we see this dependency graph that's being built here where we have Zlib, which is required by OpenSSL, and OpenSSL is required by Coco. And so if I specify options on Poco that I want everything to be built in debug mode, it's able to go through and make sure it pulls in the correct versions of all these. And all of these are actually already published in a public um, kind of registry or center. And so I can change these common flags and immediately get the packages for all of these already, already pre-built, I don't have to go and rebuild it with that flag. So now let's do a, a quick little demo here. Uh, so what we're going to do, how many, is anybody here familiar with uh, something called GOES tools? The GOES satellites? OK, so that was what I was referring to in, in the beginning. Um, it's, it started, I think, out as someone's just like experiment that they were working on to say, hey, can I pull down the images and the data and everything off of these NOAA satellites? It doesn't require very much hardware. It's very accessible, and I think it's actually kind of a fun piece to do. But there are a bunch of dependencies, and their way of solving the dependency problem is they just vendored all of the libraries, so you just pull everything down and you know build off old packages. Um, so instead, what I did is I built the actual dependencies for these. Um, and so, let me just, look at, we'll pull up um, this Conan file that I have here. So we kind of had the stuff we were talking about before, about whether, uh, like, informate metadata about it. We're going to be using CMake generator. Is this big enough for people? I can make it a little bigger if it's, we're good? All right. Um, we're we're going to pull in our CMake wrapper that we need. Um, we're going to say, you know, FPIC is not valid for Windows, so that's not an option that will be available for that platform. Where we're getting our uh, tools, we're going to apply patches. You frequently are going to have to apply packages, patches when you're doing this to make sure that it's referring to the Conan packages, not the system packages. So it'll apply the patches for all of that. Explain how we're going to do the building, the packaging, and the library pieces that are here. Um, 
I believe this was every bit here. I just realized that I was not looking at the one that I meant. This was an underlying library, not the actual one. I'll just pull the other one up really quick. Um, this is the so that was one of the low-level dependencies. This is one of the higher-level dependents. So this is the actual application. Um, what I wanted to point out here is here's where we're actually specifying all of the libraries that are part of this. So we make sure that they're all available. So we have this projection library, Proj4, Proj now I think is what it's called, uh, RTL SDR, JSON, a common JSON parser, um, this SZIP uh, style library, um, work uh, error correction libraries, TOML, NanoMessage, OpenCV, all of these things. So if we go and build this, um, make sure I go into that. Goes tools. Oh. Make sure I grab the right version number for this because it's not version well. Conan, create this. Oops. Goes tools. Um, oops. Do this. Um, I believe we do this. All right. Um, so it is, what did I do right now? Oh. I told, forgot to tell it to build everything. I probably actually didn't want to do that. It's actually now, I just told it, I should have told it to do build only the missing ones. I told it to force build everything. But you'll notice I'm actually building all of the dependencies in that entire dependency graph, including everything for OpenCV even right now. And this is assuming there's nothing on my machine. I don't have to worry about any of these things. So I'm building that entire dependency graph. Um, for all these applications. So I'm getting the most recent versions of all of this stuff. Um, at the end of this, it will go through and finish this piece up. Um, we'll see how fast this goes. See, OpenCV uh, builds here. Are just, I, might, I might change this, just do missing, so <laughs> you guys don't watch my screen go forever. Um, Already involved, da, da, da. calling build on Ghost Tools. Now we're just building that one application, which we didn't have a valid configuration for. It should be done quite soon. Right. Yeah. So while this is building, uh, if you have multiple recipes that, multiple programs that all depend on the same library, yep. uh, will it build multiple copies of that library? Or no. Will it reuse them? It will reuse them. Um, and I will show an example of this. Okay, so this thing just all went rebuilt, ran a couple tests against the package. So the package is now available. Um, and I can see that if I go Conan search goes tools. Um, I don't know how to use this keyboard, I apologize. Um, so we see that this recipe does exist right here. And so you asked, so if I do Conan info for this package, dash dash graph equals step dot HTML. So I'm going to generate the dependency graph for that package. And we see the full dependency graph. Real, that's uh, easy to see. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So we see our original. This is our, our application, actually, right here, and all of those dependencies and the versions of all of those. But you asked about things that require multiples of the same. So OpenCV over here, we can see a bunch of things are using libz. And so in this case, they're all referring to the same configuration of libz over here uh, with this package ID that's associated with it. And so. That's where, that's where this becomes more powerful because it'll make sure to always be pointing at, those same, um, at that same package. Um, so what we did at this point is just fill up a folder in your system, Conan, data, and here's all of the, sorry if this is, uh, maybe people can see it. These are all those libraries that got built. So these are like hidden off into your system with all the revisions and everything that are uh, that are there. And now if I go to a little working directory right here, 
I can now do Conan install goes tools. Oops, apparently I copied the whole thing here. And then I'm going to use a generator to deploy. So now what happened is I effectively just installed all the dependencies that were already pre-built in this location for me. So here's all of my libraries that were part of this, all of their libraries. Everything is linked to the proper things inside of here. And so if I look in Go's tools, bin, I see those applications that were built there all using the dependencies I wanted. Um, uh, the dash here. Let me, let me uh, pick up this satellite signal with this non-existent antenna right here. <laughs> it will not pick it up. I promise that. Uh, what did I do? Go <coughs> proceed. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> It's like I'm guessing at the uh, arguments here, but I thought they were. All right. So it found my tuner, and it's now not, not finding the signal that we're looking for. But it is running through there. It's using all of those libraries that we just built through that entire process. Um, so that's, that's kind of the core piece of it. We took this thing, <laughs> built it all. I've never built anything on a Mac before with C up until a week ago, so um, it was a uh, it was basically the same. I did the, I built the libraries on my Linux machine and then I, I I did it on the Mac, and so that's one of the the nice features there is the, that ability to create your recipe, specify all the platforms, and then kind of make sure you don't get your let your C make get into the weeds about the platforms that it's supporting. You just say these are the packages I want. Go figure out the pieces that we need. Um, so like I'd also, I mean, we saw here that I, I uh, it was actually reading off of this uh, RTL SDR here, but I also was running. Um, forgive me, I'll have to look at my notes here. We can go scan the the FM bands here. So I'm just using the RTL SDR. I installed the same packages over here. It's gathering. Uh, um, some data there, and we can go open. Um, let's see. And we can see some FM band that we were able to pick up a little bit better than that satellite. <laughs> so it's working, it's real. Um, and I can get these same exact things. Um, I'm over here on my, this, uh, um, this Docker container that I have running uh, Fedora. And I'm going to pull that same piece for just for the RTL SDR. It won't find the hardware this time. Um, but you can see the application is running. And it didn't have to rebuild anything. It pulled all these down from the existing package feeds. So I didn't have to have a compiler available to me to use this in this case. So kind of one last thing that I wanted to mention as part of this um, is um, this comes a little bit. It's my company supports Conan. Conan is actually part of my company, but um, we have now a new service that we're doing for the open source called Conan Center. Well, we had Conan Center before, but now we have an um, automated build system that's tied to it. So if you publish your recipes into this, into this repository, you will then get your recipes built for Mac, Windows, um, and Linux in a bunch of different configurations. So if it's a C++, C++, pro or if it's a C++ project, it'll be built in about 160 different configurations and made all available. So that's multiple versions of Windows uh, Visual Studio. That's multiple versions of whatever Mac is using, different GCC versions. Um, it's not a CI system for testing your packages, <laughs> um, but it can give you some insights and is my package actually building on Windows? Um, that's, I know, for me, a struggle. Um, so that, that's there. Um, and so we can take one quick look over here uh, at like Zlib, for instance, is available inside of Conan Center. And you can see there's 18 different Windows builds, 52 uh, Linux builds, and 12 Mac OS builds as well. Um, so 
Um, so I, one of the reasons that I came to talk about this here is that I see on the mailing list the people who are complaining about, uh, I just want to build this. I don't care whether it's 3.7 or 3.8. I just want to do my project. Why are you making my life hard? Now, there's a little bit of you know back and forth on there about you know everything. And I know a bunch of people have been doing some really good work about, especially for GNU Radio, packaging up for Debian and Fedora and Ubuntu, multiple versions of it so that people can use it. But you're still relying on these system libraries. We're still, I feel like, holding ourselves back in certain cases on this. Um, and especially when we look at the out of tree modules and stuff like that, if we're able to actually package those things up in a smart way, I think that this is a way that we could avoid this whole PyBombs custom system um, and, and save us a bunch of headache. Um, so I'm interested in exploring down that path if anybody else is interested. Um, so uh, I'd, lo I'd love to see that, that come together. Um, and then one last thing. If this has sparked your interest in, in actually solving dependencies, not just talking about them, um, there is a, a, a conference uh, uh, I know, uh, for this called Conan Days. Um, so in, in Madrid in March. So if you want to you hang out with the barbarians and learn about packaging, um, there's a discount code, and uh, we'd happy happy to talk about it more. We have a bunch of people who are using this um, in industry as well as open source. So. What's going on? So, any questions from people? Lots of questions. Okay, I think you. Uh, Yeah, so you, you were talking about Flatpak, is that correct? So my understanding of Flatpak is that it, it's this kind of, yeah. Uh, he, so he's, he's asking about Flatpak versus Conan in terms of is it a base system image that you're layering to kind of contain, it's not really a container, but containerize your application, your files. It's, it's very different because here all it's doing is just changing how everything is linked together and uh, keeping track of that structure. Um, so it's much lighter in a way, um, but it also is more complex because of that. So, yep. Does Conan also support static linking your software instead of dynamic? Yeah, so I, uh, let's see here. Uh, where did I put this? Ah, here, right here. Um, so these are those options that I was talking about. So see how I have here shared equals true? So this is one of the most common features is shared versus static and being able to flip that flag on. You can change that for, you can either say globally for my build, I want everything static or everything uh, shared, but you can also spe specify it at a dependency level as well um, if you want. Um, Can you repeat the first part? Uh, do you already have a Volk recipe on your Conan index? A work? Volk. No, not yet. Um, this is something that I think is one of the, the first things that I would like to see. So one thing, so the question was, do we have libvolk uh, inside of uh, Conan Center? We do not right now. Um, but I think it would be rather trivial to get in there. The one thing I will say about something like libvolk is you're normally targeting as many of your compilers or, or your processors' features as possible. And so with that, you need to specify, so there's some stuff that's missing here. You can create profiles that represent these with additional compiler flags that you want. You could just say, hey, figure out what's on my machine. Um, but that's where the, you may have to host your own copy of the package in your registry, which you can do. Um, if you want to get all of the support from all the intrinsics and everything like that um, that are enabled. Um, so that was the first one, and then you said there was a second half. Yeah, the second question was how do those components also interact with my system? 
So if you package everything so that you're pointed at all of the, all of your finds are using the correct, and your target linkings are using the Conan package feature, you will not be using any of your system libraries. You don't, I want to be clear here, you can start doing Conan without doing that if you, you can use your system ones. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Open Embedded over here is not happy. Um, <laughs> Who's doing the security updates? I hate to interrupt. Yeah, those people using uh, Ubuntu 1404. <laughs> uh, Okay, um, yeah, so you can mix and match if you want, um, but the ideal situation is you should be making it so that all the dependencies are packaged up. You're running close on time, but. Uh, these configurations, uh, do you have to uh, edit them yourself, or are they, let's say, through package? Um, so there are defaults. It will look at your local machine and generate a default uh, profile for you. Um, so, you know. I'm building on a Mac, so a lot of these features have been established here. But you can build additional profile or uh, configuration profiles. So, and they will work, or, or do you test all the permutations, or how does that, you know, how, how do I, should I, should I expect it to work or not? Uh, so this is where this is where it's nice having the Conan centerpiece because I can see those configurations that were built for. Um, and I, I, I'm short on time here, so. Or if over, anyone so. wants to leave, quietly shuffle out. And if anyone wants to get a seat, quietly shuffle in while we finish questions. Yeah. So you can see I just picked one of the random configurations that was built for Zlib. Um, so this one, it was building uh, for GCC version 8 for Linux and some other flags and stuff. So this is one of the Conan Center has you know, like I said, for C++, something like 120, I think, different uh, build configurations that it will build against that cover kind of the common cases. But you can, I mean, people use this also for building, like, for Android NDK and stuff like that. So you can tweak those things as you wish to build. Um, and not every recipe will build on all these configurations. Like, some of them you say, this is not something that builds in Windows. Um, it, maybe the developer just doesn't support Windows as a, something they're building. So then you won't have those configurations.